Welcome back YouTube, I'm Curiously Cory, and this is part 2 of my IoT for Beginners series. In the last video we talked about a few ways IoT worked, and some ideas of what you could do with it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Sonoff Basic to build an IoT 3 socket extension plug, and we're going to flash it with Tasmodo so we can integrate it with our Home Assistant in the next video. You should be warned, we're going to be connecting to mains voltage here. Mains voltage is very dangerous and you should exercise extreme caution in each step. At no point until the bare wires are completely covered up should this project be plugged into the wall. For this project you're going to need a Sonoff Basic, a short extension cord, a FTDI USB to serial converter, and a few male to female jumper wires. You'll also need a computer with the Arduino IDE installed and configured for ESP8266 boards. There's a lot of great videos out there on how to set up the Arduino IDE, so if you need help with this process, I'll link one in the description below. So let's get making. First, we're gonna prepare the sawn off for flashing. This is a newer one, and it's labeled RFR2 Power V1 on the board, but if yours is slightly different, it should program the same as long as you connect the jumpers in the correct order. Make sure your FTDI is set to the 3.3 volt mode, then connect the female ends of your jumpers to ground, VCC, TX, and RX. Connect the FTDI's ground to the ground on the Sonoff, then FTDI RX to the Sonoff's TX, then FTDI TX to the Sonoff's RX, then finally FTDI VCC to the Sonoff's 3.3 volt. All you need to do to get a good connection is apply light pressure to the base of the jumper wires connectors and hold them in place. Now we're ready to set up Tasmoda. Visit Tasmoda on GitHub and find the release web page. From here we're going to download the source code zip file. Once downloaded, extract the zip file to a known location. Open the extracted folder and in another window find your Arduino folder. For Windows 10 users, it's under Documents slash Arduino. Once you've found the Arduino folder, copy the sauna file from the extracted Tasmoda source and paste it, paste it in your Arduino folder. Then open the libs folder and copy everything in there into your Arduino slash library folder. Now you can launch your Arduino IDE and open the sonoff slash sonoff ino file. It should open the whole project for you. Make sure your board is correctly selected from the tools menu. If you have the RFR2 power module like I do, you'll need to select generic ESP8285. If you're using the one that says Sonoff Basic or Sonoff TH, then you'll want to select the generic ESP8266 board instead. Finally, select the correct COM port, and if you're not sure which it is, unplug the FTDI, then plug it back in, and you can see which one disappears and reappears. And now we're ready to upload. Before we do, if you want to manually set your IP or Wi-Fi credentials, head over to the myuserconfig.h file and set those details up now. Setting the Wi-Fi credentials here allows you to skip part of the configuration process, and if you change it down the road, Tasmoda will still enter AP mode and allow for manual configuration at that time. Make sure your jumpers are all in place and gently apply pressure to make sure your connections are good. Then press down the button on the Sonoff and while holding the button down, plug it into the USB. Once the USB is ready, you can let go of the button and click upload in the Arduino IDE. It's normal for it to take a while for the program to compile. There are a couple of errors you might run into here. The first is something about ESP mem, and if that happens, just unplug the USB and repeat the process of holding the button down while plugging it in and try again. If you get a library not found error or something about a library was not declared in this scope, you may need to rename your Arduino slash libraries folder to something else, then create a new libraries folder and copy the Tasmoda slash libs folder into that. If you end up with a different error entirely, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do whatever I can to help you figure it out. Once the upload hits 100%, you're ready to button it all up and make the final connections. First, put the Sonoff back in its case. Then we're going to need to cut the extension cord in half, or wherever on the line you want the Sonoff to be. On my Amazon Basics cord here, the wires coincide with the positions on the plug. 
Looking at it with the prongs facing me, left is hot or load, middle is ground, and right is neutral. If you're unsure, while it's not plugged in, use a multimeter to test for resistance between the prongs and the wires. OL is going to mean no contact, and zero or a very low resistance value would indicate connection. Connect the input wires to the correct terminals, then switch to the other side and connect the output wires to the correct terminals on that side as well. I used a wire nut and some electrical tape to connect the final wire. If you have a soldering iron, you could solder this connection and use heat shrink to insulate it instead. Finally, screw down the protective strain relief covers and we're ready to plug it in. After plugging it in for the first time, a wireless access point with the name of Sonoff dash number 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 will show up on your wireless access list. Connect to this wireless network and after initializing, browse to 192.168.4.1. You can enter your wireless credentials here and then the device will restart. I then used my router's device list to find the IP address of the module, entered that in my browser's URL bar, and congratulations, you're connected to your first smart device. If you click toggle and listen for the click, you'll know everything is working right. You can now turn on or off whatever's plugged into the three sockets on your extension cord. From here, you could install an app like Yeti and control the devices with your phone alone. Or you could join me in the next beginner's video and we'll install Home Assistant where you can set up your home control dashboards and start creating automations. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to follow along with my upcoming videos, subscribe so you don't miss out on all the exciting things we're going to build together. I hope to see you next time and as always, happy hacking.